Hey y'all, I'm Hope and I am officially on spring break as of today. It is currently Friday, March 3rd and I'm so excited. I got all of my papers done and turned in. I had two that were due in the past week and I got one turned in Tuesday, I got the other one turned in Thursday. So I am good to go, I am in the clear <laughs> for my break and I am so excited about it. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna be vlogging this week, taking you guys along with me on all of my adventures. I'm not really doing that much in the way of adventuring. I am going on a trip with my partner to visit his family. And I'm also, I think, gonna try and go to the zoo this week, so that'll be fun. Um, that's kind of the only adventures that I'm really gonna be doing, but I am hoping to get a lot of reading and gaming done this week, so I'm really excited. Um, and actually, I kicked off my spring break with a trip to the bookstore, because obviously I did. Um, I told myself that if I got my papers done and everything, I would treat myself to the last two Jane Austen books I didn't already have. And so I went to Barnes Noble when I got off work today and I forgot to take my camera with me. So that's why there was unfortunately no uh, lovely B-roll of Barnes and Noble. But I do have like a little tiny haul to, to start off my spring break. So let me grab those books real quick. Okay, so first up I have the two things that I had specifically told myself I could get, the two Jane Austen books. I have four of her six main novels. My cat is currently getting in the Barnes and Noble bag so you might hear some crinkling in the background. Um, but the last two I needed to complete my collection so I can finish out reading all of her works were, um, I lost my train of thought in the middle of that sentence. The last two books I needed were Mansfield Park and Sense and Sensibility. And I ended up picking up just the like very basic Penguin Classics editions. One, because they were way less expensive and two, because my Barnes and Noble had very little options in terms of these two books. It was like, get the really cheap Penguin Classics or get the really expensive, like fancy, nice editions. It was gonna be like 50 bucks for these two books and I, I wasn't gonna do that. So I got the little um, Penguin Classics versions and I'm excited to read those. I'm hoping to read some more of her work over the summer. I'm currently reading Persuasion of Her Class, so I'm gonna be like reading that in hopefully the next couple of weeks. Um, actually not hopefully, I will be reading that within the next week because I have to write a paper on it. Um, but I'll be finishing up Persuasion and then I'll have read half of her kind of six main novels. So I'm hoping to read the other half soon because I'm really enjoying reading Jane Austen's work. And then the other couple of things I picked up, um, next was Before They Are Hanged by Joe Abercrombie. Um, if you've seen my TBR for the month, you'll know that this was on it. I'm currently reading The Blade itself and I'm hoping to then pick up this one pretty quickly afterwards. Um, I decided to just skip the next one just in case somewhere in the middle I end up hating the series or something, but I think it's likely that I'll be going back at some point to pick up uh, The Last Argument of Kings, I think. And then the last one I picked up kind of on a whim because I've been wanting to read this and my library doesn't have it and it's not on Libby so I haven't been able to find it anywhere but I got Claire Coda's Woman Eating because I've been seeing so many people talk about this and it sounds super interesting. It's a kind of literary vampire book about a young woman who's a vampire and she's moved to, is it New York? London. Um, she's moved to London on her own. She's kind of on her own for the first time out from under the thumb of her mother and it's like about her adjusting to her life in London and the people that she's in, kind of interacting with and getting into relationships with and I don't know it just sounds really interesting and I've not read anything like this so I've been hearing a lot about it and I wanted to check it out and see if I end up liking it or not but it sounded really cool and um, if I don't end up loving it I know a couple of people who might um, would like, kind of like literary fiction so you know if I don't love it I've got some people I can kind of then gift it on to but yeah those are all the books that I picked up and I'm so excited that it's finally spring break like I am so ready for this the last two weeks have been incredibly stressful and um, I'm just really proud of myself for getting those papers done and now I'm gonna take a bit of a break so the next thing on my like to-do list is I've got to go pack because the trip that I'm going on with my partner actually starts today you don't need to get up here sir absolute little menace he thought he was going to jump up onto my desk. You silly baby. No, don't get up there. He's realized that he can jump onto my desk and so now he keeps doing it. And it's fine when it's like down low and I'm sitting and working, but it's kind of a problem when it's up high and he like knocks stuff into the floor. No, sir. Come here. Come here. Okay. I'm gonna do, we're going to do shoulder kitty. Okay. We're doing shoulder kitty time. Yes, I love you, buddy. 
you sweet boy? You hear your brother getting into stuff, don't you? You're interested. You're curious. Yes, thank you. <laughs> is this the pumpkin show now? Yeah, it is. Isn't it? Everything is the pumpkin show. What's he doing? You want to go check it out? There you go. He can hear Elwood somewhere getting into stuff, and he's like, I need to go find out what my brother is doing. Anyway, um, leaving today for that trip and coming back on Sunday. So I'm going to take my camera with me. I don't know that I'll vlog that much while I'm there because I've never met them, and I don't know that any of them would be comfortable being in a video, and I'm not going to like make them do that. And my partner also, I know, doesn't like to be on camera. So all of that aside, if I update, it'll just be like me in a corner talking about whatever I'm reading. So with that being said, I am planning to take some books with me. So hang on a moment. So I mentioned already that I'm reading Persuasion for a class right now, and I'm probably gonna take this with me so I can go ahead and finish it. And then I'm gonna give my brain a few days to kind of process everything and figure out what I'm gonna be writing about. I do have some ideas already, but I do have to turn in that paper like the Tuesday after break. So I need to get on that. And then I also just mentioned that I'm currently reading The Blade itself, so I want to go ahead and try and get through this one. This is my current read, and I think we're getting an announcement soon on what the uh, live show date is going to be for that live show from the Catch Up Book Club, so I want to get this done so that I can participate in that and watch it, um, assuming that it's at a time that I'm not at work or on this trip. But I'm going to try and read those two, and then I'm also going to go charge my Kindle and take it with me so that I can have that for in the car. I may try and read some in the car, though I'm not sure what I might read if I do that. But yeah, that's kind of where things stand and what I'm going to be doing, and I'm really excited. And hopefully I will do some fun and interesting things that I can show you guys during this break. But for now, I actually really need to go, one, eat my lunch, because I'm waiting for that to finish eating. And two, I need to pack, so. Well, I am all packed and ready to go. Are you the luggage, sir? Well, it's Sunday now, and I have just gotten back in the last little while from my trip with my partner. And uh, yeah, it was good. We went over to our hometown to meet with the rest of his extended family because they've apparently been wanting to meet me, and it's just been difficult to schedule so far. But this weekend was his uh, one of his grandmother's 90th birthday, so there was gonna be a party where everybody was getting together, so I got invited to go over with him to that so that I could meet everybody. So we did that on Saturday and did a lot of visiting that day and then today we've spent some time visiting with the other half of his family and so I've met the vast majority of his extended family at this point. And I feel like it went really well. I think um, I got along well with everyone. They seemed to like me. They were all seemed very nice so I thought it was a, it was a successful weekend overall. But I'm really glad to be home now because I'm really tired. But that's uh that's to be expected. I don't really interact with people that much, so it was a, just a lot of peopling for me because it was two really big crowds of people. Um, but yeah, now that I'm home, I've got to finish putting together my bullet journal for the week today because that's what I always do on Sundays. So I'm gonna head and do that, and then I think I'm gonna spend the rest of the night chilling. That's I'm just gonna hang out. Um, it's like 8:20, and I'm thinking I might see if a friend wants to play some Dead Space or something, but other than that. I'm just gonna like hang out and not do much because I'm very tired. Probably go to bed early. And then tomorrow I've got a couple of small things I wanna get done in terms of like putting away laundry and that kind of stuff. I need to organize my linen closet. Very exciting. But I'm also, I think, gonna just try and spend some time reading because now I actually have the time to do that. And I have a very long list of books to get through this month. So I'm probably going to spend time tomorrow reading. Um, that being said, I did read one book over the weekend, which was The Solstice Cabin by Arden Powell. This I was reading for Roll of Reads for I think the self or indie published book prompt. So I still need to fill out my little form for the readathon to say that I had finished a book. But I read this and I started it on Friday and then finished it in the car on the way back today. And this one is a short fantasy romance novella about David and Amaruk, who are both they live in Canada, they're from Toronto. And it's set in like the early 1900s, I think. It's set in a time when being queer was still likely to get you arrested and tried for public indecency. So it's about these two men who've been friends for like their entire lives. They've been friends since they were children. And then all of a sudden they're like in their early 30s and something kind of devastating happens with one of their friends. And then the one guy, Amaruk, 
leaves a note saying like hey I'm leaving and then just disappears and so David the other main character and the point of view character spends six months trying to find him with the book opening as he is finding on earth finally in the northwest territories of Canada in like a little cabin in the middle of nowhere and that's kind of the setup is that he finds him at this cabin and then they spend the book trying to kind of fix their friendship as if from the damage caused by Amaruk's sudden disappearance and then this other thing that's happened with one of their other friends which I'm not going to say what it is I'm not going to spoil it but it's pretty obvious early in the book what that thing is um so yeah that's pretty much it it's pretty simple and I thought it was fine I think I'm gonna give it like three three and a half stars I think that it's it, it accomplishes what it wants to accomplish what it set out to do um but I have some issues with like the time period is really unclear it's I'm not sure when it's set exactly kind of early 1900s but a lot of their behavior and the ways that they're talking don't really fit with that it's very modern dialogue and I kept forgetting what time period it was in until someone would mention like oh well if we were in Toronto and we were interacting like this we'd be arrested for public indecency or for gross indecency and I was like, oh right, this is supposed to be set in like the early 1900s or something. So it was really throwing me off and a little bit confusing there. I also just didn't really like David, the perspective character, because he was just pretty self-centered. And it, I found him kind of frustrating to read from. But other than that, I think it's pretty fun. It's a pretty cute story. It, it was a good like shut my brain off and just read kind of book. So I finished that now and I can mark that off my, C my TBR for the month and move on to the next thing so hello and happy monday it is currently like 10 in the morning about ish somewhere in there um but i woke up really late today i slept in i was very tired after this weekend i didn't sleep super well over there first night was okay but we went to bed so late that i just didn't get enough sleep and then second night i had a little more trouble sleeping so i was catching up on sleep so i slept in until like 9 30 this morning which I normally don't do, but I am up now. I'm having some breakfast. I have my, I'm sure it, this is fine, right? Like it's Pop-Tarts, fine. My battery is flashing, I need to go grab my other one. But I think I'm gonna read some of Persuasion this morning so that I can make some headway on the stuff that I need to read and make some room for the stuff I want to read. Anyway, I'm gonna try and make some headway on Persuasion so that I can make progress on the stuff I need to read. And then after that, I'm thinking I might read The Blade Itself, sir. No, I'm just gonna stand here with my arm across it. Um, my, my breakfast is up here and I don't want him putting his little feet in my breakfast. Um, Cause he will, yeah. But I'm thinking I'm gonna read The Blade Itself after I get through Persuasion. And then I'm not sure exactly what I'm gonna read after that. I have some library books I need to read and I wanna make some headway on my roll of read stuff. Elle here has decided I do not in fact need to read Persuasion. Um, I need to pay attention to him and play with him. So I will be doing that. Yes. I read about a page and then he came up and was like getting in my lap and trying to get in the book and just being a little stinker. So, And I was having fun playing with the little wrist strap of my camera. So, I think they're glad that I'm home at the moment. Yeah. Well, I finished not all of Persuasion, but I got to the end of Volume 1 and started Volume 2. And I just keep feeling so bad for Anne. <laughs> like, this poor girl is so sad. She was talked out of marrying this guy that she really cared about because he wasn't somebody with a title or land or anything. And now he's in a position where other people in her social circle want to marry him. And she's, like, having to watch him entertain other people's affections and it, it's just it's so sad I feel so bad for Anne she's so mistreated by so many of the people in her life but I am really enjoying this and I'm really curious to see what's going to happen next because I've just got introduced to some additional characters some of um Captain Wentworth's friends including one whose fiance died and so he's kind of a little bit younger than Wentworth and he's more in Anne's kind of like not social circle, but like, he has similar interests as she does. He's very well read and he's kind of bookish and quiet. And so he's an interesting kind of counterpoint to Captain Wentworth. I'm enjoying this a lot so far, but then my focus started to waver. So I decided to walk away from this for a bit. And I have since 
had some lunch and I walked in the treadmill for a while and watched some YouTube. And now I think I might actually put away some laundry first of all because I've been meaning to do that for days. But I'm thinking I might also, once that's done, play something because I haven't played any video games lately. And I have a few things that I'm near the end of that I might play, but I th I'm kind of thinking I might play some Resident Evil 3 because I've been near the end of that game for a long time now. <laughs> I'm pretty sure I'm near the end. I'm in the hospital section, but I'm playing the Resident Evil 3 remake and I started it a while back. I guess it was last summer because a friend of mine visited and while she was here I played Resi Village with her for the second time because I had played it through already. And after she left I was on kind of major Resident Evil kick. So I had just finished a full replay of Resi 8 and I dived directly into a replay of Resi, or not a replay, I actually restarted and finished Resi 2 remake because I had started that, got frustrated and quit. Played it a second time, absolutely loved it, finished it, and then immediately dived into Resi 3. And then I got to kind of the hospital section and ended up having other things I had to do and kind of forgot that I was playing it so I haven't played it in a while but I think I might try and polish that off at some point and then later I think when my friend is available because she's currently busy with some of her own chores and things I think later we might play some Dead Space because we've been playing the Dead Space remake and that's been a lot of fun. Are you helping? I've already moved him once so I could actually put stuff on hangers and he just keeps coming back. Hello and happy Tuesday. Is that the same intro I used for Monday? That's entirely possible. Anyway, it's Tuesday now and I'm getting ready to go to work because I decided to work two days this week so that I could bank some extra hours in the uh, inevitable event that I'm probably going to need a day off at the end of the semester, so that's kind of the system I have at work, which is that as long as I work the number of hours I'm supposed to, I can take time off, I just have to then make up those hours some way, or have banked extra hours ahead of time by working extra days, so that's what I'm doing this week, is I'm not required to work during spring break, but I'm going to work two days, which is fine because I have plenty of stuff I need to get done, so I'm going to do Tuesday and Thursday and get those extra days kind of saved up. When I get home, I'm kind of planning to read Persuasion some more because I need to get more of that read so I can write my paper on it. And then if I get that done, I'm thinking I might also play some more of what I played yesterday. Um, I didn't end up actually playing Resi 3 at all. I planned to. And then I realized that if I was going to play Dead Space with a friend of mine, that was going to be a very similar vibe. And I didn't want to play like Dead uh, Resi 3 for several hours and then play Dead Space with my friend for several hours because then I was going to get really sick of that kind of game because they are very similar in kind of style. Um, so I decided to skip that and instead I started Bug Snacks, which I've been hearing about for a while and it's really fun. It's a very strange game, but Bug Snacks is, if you haven't seen it, it's a game where you're playing as a journalist who travels to this place called Snacktooth Island where there are bug snacks and they are like little creatures that look like different kinds of food and the people on the island are eating bug snacks and you're there to talk to somebody who is like the leader of this group her name is Lizbert but she's missing so you end up kind of helping all of the people on the island and trying to find Lizbert as you're kind of going along and it's really fun and it's very interesting in the fact that it's like a very cutesy cartoony kind of game but it gets like increasingly dark and you're doing these things where you're helping characters with their personal problems which are mostly kind of dark and philosophical and things and then you're also looking for Lizbert and there's some sort of mystery happening there and it's just like things on the island are creepy and spooky and at the same time it's like bright and colorful and the gameplay is very satisfying and fun because you're just trying to catch all these little bug snacks for people and um yeah it's a lot of fun and I ended up playing this all afternoon and then when my friend logged on in the evening we ended up just continuing to play bug snacks and I just like share played it for her which um like so she could see see what I was playing and uh she's already played it but we were just having fun like running around and trying to catch some more difficult bug snacks and things like that so it was a good time and I'm probably gonna play some more of that later but first I need to get some reading done because I do need to read some of Persuasion so that I can work on that paper. I also really want to get Blade itself done because the Ketchup Book Club finally announced the live show for that which is going to be um this upcoming Sunday the 12th? 11th? Something like that. I think it's the 12th because the 14th is Tuesday. So yeah, 
I need to get that done as well. So those are kind of the plans for the day. Well, I just got home from work and I am now waiting for my lunch to finish heating. I've got some leftover pizza in the oven heating back up. So that's exciting. Um, my afternoon plans are shifting a little bit. I actually have a headache at the moment. Um, I forgot to take allergy medicine last night, so I suspect it's an allergy headache because everything around here is starting to bloom again. And uh, yeah, totally normal for me this time of year, but definitely sucks because at the moment, thank you, Evan, for your input. Um, at the moment, I'm feeling quite nauseous and my head hurts. So I'm gonna eat some food, take some medicine, and then instead of reading Pride and, not Pride and Prejudice, Persuasion for a little bit, I think I'm actually gonna just crash and play some bug snacks and wait for my headache to go away. It usually will go away within an hour or so if I eat something and take some medicine. So I should be all right after a while, but I'm just gonna like hang out for a bit. <laughs> Um, if I start to feel better though, I think I might also film a video this afternoon because I'm planning to have a bookshelf reorganization and tour that's supposed to go up uh, next, like this upcoming Saturday, and uh, I need to work on that because I've been meaning to reorganize my shelves for ages and I've never done like a proper bookshelf tour, so spring break seemed like a good time to do that since I would have the time to do it. Um, so yeah, <laughs> that is the revised plan going forward. I'm gonna try and get rid of this headache and then I might go organize my shelves for a bit. Reorganize. Um, I did read a book at work though. I was listening to an audiobook and I finished that. So today I read The Deep by River Solomon, which is a book I've been meaning to read for ages. I read about a, a quarter of it last year, I think. And um, at the time I, I just was in a bit of a slump and I didn't get to the audiobook in time and didn't finish it before. My hold had ended, but the audiobook was so good, I knew that was how I wanted to read that book. So I got it back in from the library the other day, so I listened to it today while I was at work. And I absolutely loved it. I don't know that I have any good coherent thoughts to say about it right now, because it was a very intense book, um, and I feel like I need to process it for a little bit before I have anything coherent and clear to say about it. But it definitely had me crying at my desk, so... That was a good sign of emotional investment. I know if a book makes me like cry while I'm at my desk, that like that was a good book. That one hit me right in the heart. Um, I, I just love this book. I love River Solomon's writing. I think it's beautiful. And then David Diggs does the audiobook for it. <coughs> Excuse me, choking on my own saliva. Um, David Diggs does the audiobook and he does a phenomenal job. It is so good. So I really had a good time listening to this today and just, you know, Letting River Solomon rip my heart out. It was a good time. So I think River Solomon is kind of getting solidified as a favorite author for me because I've just loved everything I've read from them. But yeah, that's what I read today. And I also am subbing this in for a couple prompts for the month because I'm doing roll of reads. And I'm using this for the halfling prompt. I was originally gonna read Saga Volume 2 for this, which is to read a short story novella or graphic novel. And this was a novella, so I'm gonna use it for that. And then also for my own TBR game, I. What I was also using Saga Volume 2 for there was a book with a non-human protagonist or main character, and so I'm going to be using this for that as well. Made some progress on my prompts that I needed to complete. It's a good time. Now I just need this headache to go away so I can actually get some more reading done, because I am really in a reading mood now, and I'm wanting to finish Persuasion because I'm really enjoying it, but I'm just going to have to... Hope that this headache goes away so I can do that. It's Wednesday now and my headache finally went away so I feel a ton better. But I did end up just playing Bug Snacks all of yesterday because between the time that I was waiting for the headache to go away and then the time after it where I just felt completely exhausted and like, ugh, um, I didn't do shit. <laughs> I just played more Bug Snacks. But I'm now like at the very end of the game and that's kind of fun. Um, I'm really liking Bug Snacks. It's a very weird game because it's like this weird blend of like cartoony bright colors um the gameplay loop is like catching little little bugs that look like food and the gameplay loop is also very satisfying because when you figure out how to catch a new bug snack you feel like you've solved a puzzle like it's so fun and then there's all of this like really grounded kind of horrifying character work where each of the characters in whatever kind of cartoony thing that they're doing is actually like dealing with some kind of personal issue where they're really struggling with something internally and this is like an externalization of that so you have like one character who's a singer and she really wants to make another big hit and so she's 
wanting you to gather bug snacks because she thinks that'll inspire her and she's really struggling with the sense that she's you know never going to find success again and that she's kind of a one-hit wonder and that upsets her and, and kind of horrifies her that that's like all she's going to be is remembered for this song that she actually kind of hates. There's another character who is like grappling with the sense of feeling like a failure and feeling like he can't succeed at anything that he puts his mind to and so he's really trying to deal with that. Like there's a lot of really grounded character work happening in a very cartoony game about grumpuses and bug snacks and I don't know it's just an interesting blend of like cozy and unsettling and I'm finding that that's something I really like in fiction um because I also really like the game Stray for that same reason. Oh oh not a cat I thought I was stepping on a cat because he walked behind me a second ago. Hi Elwood. Um the other thing that it kind of brings to mind in terms of like cozy and unsettling uh let's see it's right here is Strange Practice. This is a book I loved and that's very much what this book is. It's just like cozy but unsettling because there's some really creepy horror in here but also it's all about like this found family situation and a group of friends who is basically supporting each other through everything and relying on each other for their different skills and strengths and it's, it's just really sweet but also really unsettling. So I think that that's just like a combination that I really like. Um, while I'm standing here, I grab my glasses. My glasses have to live on my bookshelf because my cats will try to steal them overnight if I don't put them there. Uh, particularly Pumpkin, he's the little thief man. Um, Fitbits are his favorite thing to steal, or watches of any kind. If you put a Fitbit or a watch down where he can get to it, he is going to steal it. Um, I actually lost a Fitbit for like a month one time because he grabbed it in the middle of the night and I didn't like see where he dropped it. And I finally found it like a month or two later because it had just enough battery life that it had hung on all that time and somebody texted me and I heard it buzzing <laughs> and that's how I found the thing. Um, he, he's a little, he's a little cat burglar is what he is. Um, anyway, now that I am feeling better and it's Wednesday morning, it's like 9.20 in the morning, so pretty, pretty early. I've been up for a little bit, kind of getting ready for the day and everything. I'm gonna do the things that I didn't do yesterday that I had meant to do before the headache kind of completely derailed me. Uh, first of which is reorganizing my bookshelves because they have been in dire need of it for a while. I really don't like the way they're organized and I've been wanting to do this for ages and I've been putting it off for weeks just for like a, a time when I have more time to do that. I feel like spring break is, is the time when I'm going to have time to do it. So I'm gonna do this today. I'm gonna take off like all of my decorations. There's some things that I'm thinking I might put in storage or move elsewhere. Um, there's some things I might donate because I have, you can see, a ton of decorations on my shelves and they're kind of in the way when I want to pull stuff off the shelves. So I think I'm going to kind of narrow down the selection of stuff that's on here and I'm going to reorganize probably by grouping that makes sense to me, which is a very vague thing. But like right now this side is in alphabetical order and this side is grouped more the way I think I'm going to do it where it's kind of thematically grouped. So like all of my, there's my jank, John Grisham books here. Um, so like thrillers and mysteries are kind of on these top shelves. And then I've got like down here I'll have stuff that's like werewolf stuff. And then final girl stuff. And then all my vampire books are together. So I'm kind of going to do something like that. But the categories probably only make sense to me. I'm going to do that across the whole shelves and I'm actually not going to divide by like mystery, thriller, horror, and sci-fi fantasy. I'm going to um, just put things in whatever categories make sense to me, put them back on the shelves, and then we'll see where we get from there because I have a lot of books that I bought recently that are now on a bottom shelf just kind of on their own. They need to be kind of worked into the rest with the other books. Like some of them are continuations of series that are not with the series they go with. I can show you the shelf. It's this chaotic shelf down here. So yeah, I need to fix that. So uh, that's going to be the first order of business for today is reorganizing all of this and making it make sense. Well, it's a few hours later. It's two o'clock basically. And uh, I've gotten a lot done. I have completely reorganized my shelves. I do need to fix one thing on this side, um, but I've completely reorganized them and I have filmed a bookshelf tour. I don't know how great it's going to be. It's my first attempt and it was kind of uh, a struggle to figure out how to like work with the tripod and everything but I have filmed my first ever bookshelf tour both with this shelf and the one in my office 
and I also filmed an unhaul for some of the stuff that I'm taking off of my shelves because there were some things that as I was going through to reorganize I was like you know what I'm just never gonna read this or I'm just never gonna read this again so it was time to let those things go so yeah I made a lot of progress I'm really happy with how this has turned out and I am looking forward to enjoying my pretty bookshelves as I continue on with the week and everything I don't know why I said that that way I don't know. I'm very tired now. It was a lot of work and I had to take a break in the middle of it to go eat some lunch because my blood sugar was getting low and I could tell because I was getting really lightheaded and really angry. So I had to eat some lunch in the middle of that. But it's all done now. I'll be editing that in the next couple of days because I'm going to try and have that go up on Saturday. So you should be seeing that before you see this video if all goes to plan. And then the unhaul will be coming out the following week. So that is currently the plan for that. Also, this was my little helper. He was very upset. He was shut out while I was organizing the books because he kept trying to knock books over on himself and everything. But he has been in here supervising while I filmed and all that good stuff. So, he's a cozy little guy. Yeah. I just love this little cat. I'm lucky he didn't try to grab me there because he does like to smack me sometimes. He's got his little vampire teeth out. I lied, I am gonna play some bug snacks. Um, also, little man. <laughs> hey buddy. I was standing at my desk and he likes to sit on my chair when I'm standing there. Yeah, sweet boy. And the other little guy. It's over here. He's hanging out. Yes, my vlogs are just a lot of footage of my cats. Why do you ask? Um, they're always hanging out with me and I love to love on them because they're so sweet. They're very sweet cats. I really just like we could not have been luckier with all of the cats that we've had. Really, we've had some really great cats over the years. So loving these boys. But uh, yeah, I am in the mood for some bug snacks. I want to read, but my mind is kind of absorbed in bug snacks. Um, but I'm at the very end, so I think that I could potentially finish this up and be done, because I'm down to just the DLC and then like the final little chunk of the game, um, like the final party thing, so. Bug snacks, bug snacks, bug snacks, mug snacks, yeah! Oh, they're hanging out. It's a new island, dog! We gotta go over there! Must we? Uh, uh, yes, uh, uh, of course. Uh, but, but surely this job is bigger than the three of us. We need to form a miniature expedition. Well, it's Thursday afternoon now, and I just got home from work a little bit ago. Brought up the garbage cans, all that good stuff. All my returning home stuff. And I've realized that the last time I updated y'all on Persuasion, I was slightly wrong. I think I said that I was, sir. I think I said that I was at the end of volume one. I actually had one more chapter left in volume one. So I read that last night, sir. My cat. My cat being a menace. Come on, pumpkin. Let me film with me, bud. Come on. There we go. Yes. Mm. Um, I realized that I was wrong on that. I had one chapter left. I read that last night. And then I also started volume two last night. And I am content- Sir! Sir! <laughs> Thank you. Um, I am continuing to love Persuasion and I just feel so bad for Anne because she's so mistreated by so many people but she's also like the only one with any kind of common sense or calm under pressure or any of that. Um, actually I'm really surprised because Wentworth there's a scene right at the end of volume one um, without giving too many spoilers somebody in the party they've all gone to visit a seaside town called Lyme and someone in the party gets injured and he just absolutely crumples and panics under pressure. And Anne, pumpkin, sir, stop. 
Anyway, the only person in the group who really kind of remains calm under pressure is Anne. And she makes sure that the injured person is seen by a doctor and all that good stuff. Sir, no. Thank you. Oh wow, I suddenly got very washed out there. Or rather, uh, in the shadows. There we go. Um, Anne is the only person who kind of remains calm and is able to deal with the situation. So, um, yeah, I'm just like, how did this man become a captain in the Navy if at the first sign of an injury he panics? I don't know. As it turns out, my cat was being a naughty little jerk because he wanted him some baby time. He wanted to be held. As soon as I got up and put the camera down, he was on my shoulder, so. Now he's a happy little boy. Well, it's Friday evening and I don't think I've updated it all today. I guess I did have like an update with my cat earlier, but um, it's quite late now. It's about 8.15 and I have finished Persuasion. I actually finished this about an hour ago, but I finally finished it and I really enjoyed this. This is a really fucking good book. It's really fun. Um, it's essentially just following Anne as she's re-encountering Frederick Wentworth, who she was previously engaged to. And she broke off that engagement because she was persuaded by family friends. And now she's re-encountering him and he's kind of become a, a part of her kind of central friend group like eight and a half years later. And she's having to navigate her emotions about that and trying to figure out like, how does he feel about her now? Because she's still in love with him and she's rejected other people um, since then because to her, they can never kind of measure up to Wentworth. But she was um, unable to marry him because her family didn't approve of his lack of a title and his lack of fortune at the time. Um, but now he's a captain in the Navy, he has a bunch of money, things are changed. It's just a really fun story. I really love Anne as a protagonist. She's really intelligent and compassionate and also really uh, calm and steady under pressure, which is really interesting. And then um, a lot of the side characters are really fun. Like her father is terrible. He's just a vain asshole but he's fun to follow. And then there's like her sisters who are also kind of terrible, but entertaining. And then there's a few really great characters like uh, the Admiral and his wife, very nice people. I really like them. The Musgroves are cool. The Harvilles, also very cool. Like there's just a lot of really great characters in here that I think are a mixture of entertainingly evil and or just kind of asshole-ish and really genuinely kind people who are nice to Anne and she deserves that because her family is not nice to her. The language is definitely a little bit dense at points but a lot of the plot beats and everything feel a lot like a modern book which I think is really interesting. So I finally finished it. I'm really glad I have and my plan for tomorrow is to go ahead and start working on the paper I need to write on this. I have to write what we call a problem paper in this class um, which is like two to three pages just kind of raising a question of interest to talk about something that this class can discuss. So one of the things I'm interested in here is that there's a lot of stuff about like place and about memory and those things seem to be tied together in some way so I think I'm gonna try and write something around that. I'm just not sure exactly how I'm gonna connect those ideas yet. I was planning to go ahead and start reading Blade itself. By start I mean continue. Um, because the live show that I wanted to watch for this is on Sunday and I have about 350-ish pages left. So I was gonna read some tonight and then read another chunk tomorrow around working on my paper, but I am actually incredibly miserable with ovulation pain right now. I was sitting at my desk totally fine and then all of a sudden I was like, oh no. And just had to like sit there with my head down for a few minutes. So I have hobbled my way to some ibuprofen and I am now I think going to hobble my way to a shower. <laughs> And then, depending on how I feel after that, I may either read some of The Blade itself or I may just kind of chill and watch some YouTube, which I'm, at the moment I'm kind of leaning towards that. I've also been looking at words a long time today because I started reading Persuasion around 10 a.m. this morning, or I started from where I left off. And it just between my cat being an absolute menace and not letting me read because he could not stand it that I was reading and not petting him. And also just the process of going through it kind of slowly and taking a lot of... Uh, notes and highlighting a lot of stuff like that just made it go slower. So I've looked at a lot of words today and I'm kind of thinking I maybe don't want to look at more words and especially not because I don't feel great. Well it's Saturday now and I, uh, I damn near said happy Friday and then I was like that's the wrong day. 
spring break has completely killed whatever sense of time I had because <laughs> I'm like, I don't know what day it is. It's fine. Um, anyway, it's Saturday and I feel a lot better today and also the weather is really nice. It was really gray yesterday, but today it's like really sunny and pretty. I think it's supposed to be pretty cool, but it's sunny at least. Plan for the day is uh, my mom and I are going to go get some brunch at our favorite spot, which is going to be a lot of fun. We haven't done it in a while and we usually do it if we have stuff that we need to get done during the day, like on a Saturday. It's a, just like a nice way to start the weekend. So we're going to go get some brunch and that's going to be a lot of fun. And then I'm going to come back and work on a dump doc of just like all the thoughts and ideas I have for this paper for persuasion. going to work on that and then I'm hoping, if I can reach it, um, I'm hoping to get to about page 300, 350 in the blade itself today. I don't know if that's going to happen. I'm on 139, 140 right now. But I would like to get that far because the live show for it is on Sunday afternoon. So if I can get through to like 300 and 300 to 350, that'll put me halfway through the section I have left, which will leave me the last little chunk to read on Sunday morning before the live show, and then I'll actually be able to watch it, which I've been wanting to do. So I'm going to attempt that, but we will see. I don't know if that's actually going to happen. I will hopefully at least be closer to the end when the live show happens. And then I also have started reading A Woman Eating by Claire Coda because I was looking at my Roll of Reads TBR and I realized I had several really chunky things for the month. And I also just had a library hold come in, which I'll talk about in a moment, but it's a very long book. Um, but I wanted to sub in A Woman Eating for my paladin prompt or just to read a book set in a city or an urban area. The book I originally had there was actually pretty short but I just have been really wanting to read this. It's been sitting on my shelf looking at me so I really wanted to pick this one up and it's really interesting so far. I'm like 30 pages in so I'm really just starting to get into the story but I'm really curious to see where this is gonna go because Lydia is a really interesting and relatable main character but the problems that she's running into are really not so I'm really curious to see where this story is going to take her. Uh, the library book I just had come in is uh, A Shadow in the Ember by Jennifer L. Armentrout, which is the first of the Flesh and Fire spinoffs from Blood and Ash. I'm not enjoying these per se. Um, I've read the first three of the Blood and Ash books and then I was seeing that like the recommended reading order is the publication order. So those three in the first Flesh and Fire book, then the fourth Blood and Ash book, then the fifth Flesh and Fire book, and then I think sixth Flesh and Fire book, and then fifth blood and ash i'm not sure a after about whatever the the war of two queens and then the a flame in the shadow flame flame in the a light in the flame that one um after that i kind of have lost track but i'm on a shadow in the amber and i've been reading these for the entertainment of my friends basically we have a cursed books club where they find stuff they want to know about but don't want to have to read themselves or I start reading something that feels a little bit cursed just in general if I'm picking something up for a class that feels a little cursed or if I pick something up just in general that has a bit of a cursed vibe to it I'll read it and then tell them about it and it's a lot of fun we have a good time it's just it's not quite hate reading we're reading it for enjoyment but just like in the sense of these aren't necessarily good but they are entertaining but I am up to a shadow in the amber for that series and uh, the library hold just came in a couple of days ago so I need to read it before it needs to be turned back in because it's like a 650 700 page fantasy book and I know it's gonna take me approximately six days to read it because that's how long it took me for all three of the last three books that I've read from that series well it's been several hours um, our brunch took longer than we thought because it was a pretty long wait at the restaurant we went to, but it was fine. Um, it was really good. It was so worth it. Um, but I have just now finished, it's about five o'clock and I've just now finished making my kind of ideas document and notes document for the paper I need to write on Persuasion, which is a very little paper. It's like two to three pages. I can't remember if I've already said that. So that's what I have done so far today. Um, and since I'm going to be taking a break, I think I'm going to swap over and read some of the blade itself so that I can try and get through that for the live show tomorrow because I really want to watch it because I uh, missed the beginning of their elderling along so I did never read any of those but I'm really interested in reading and keeping up with the ketchup book club's reading of the first law stuff so gonna try and make some progress there and that's pretty much my plan for the evening. I'm hopeful that I might have some ideas for this paper later this evening and might come back and start writing it but we will see. Well it's Sunday morning and I have had breakfast, some coffee, or rather 
actually actively having some coffee um but i did not get my paper written last night so i'm gonna be working on that today i did get a whole document put together with all of my notes and all my ideas and things like that and now i'm just kind of trying to figure out how i'm gonna fit all the pieces together if that makes sense um i'm wanting to write this paper about place and about like the way that houses are not only like important in the sense of like the actual social hierarchy but there's a sense that houses are like alive in certain ways in the story um they're described as like owning eyes and limbs or of being alive again or of being um chilled when certain people come into the room so there's a lot of stuff like that, that i think is interesting so i'm gonna write about that i think i've already mentioned this perhaps just ignore me if you've already heard this but that's kind of where i'm headed um and then yesterday i also meant to read about 150 pages of the blade itself um, I read 10 pages of the blade itself. I was just so focused in on trying to figure out this paper that then I couldn't get my brain to like refocus on something else. So I was trying to read this and it just didn't happen and I ended up reading about 10 pages and I really like it. I'm having a great time. I just could not get my brain to focus on it yesterday. Um, so anyway, I don't think I'm gonna make it in time to watch the live show later today because it's about four and a half hours away and it's going to take me probably closer to six hours to finish the book based on my typical reading speed and that's on top of the fact that I also still need to write this paper and that really has to come first so I don't think I'm gonna make it but I am gonna try and get through this paper and read some more of Al read some more of this tonight so you know progress will still be made that is still the goal and um it'll be okay I'll, I'll watch the live show um later I'll just watch it after the fact um and i will try and get a head start on before they're hanged for the next live show once i get this one done so we will see how that goes but yeah that's kind of where i'm at for the morning um i'm gonna probably get on chat with a friend who said she would um, let me talk at her about my paper so that i can try and bounce some ideas off her and see if i can get figured out what i'm gonna write so that's where i'm at for the day and i will probably check in with you guys later if i have done anything else interesting Hopefully I have. Maybe I'll have finished the paper. Who knows? We'll see. Well, it's been a few hours and the paper's not yet written. Um, progress is being made. I have figured out an outline and I've kind of got my general ideas I want to include figured out. I'm just trying to figure out how to enter the paper, where I'm starting precisely. But that's probably going to be the rest of my evening. It's just working on that. So not very exciting. Um, what else? I did manage to read a little bit more of the blade itself. I've read maybe 10 more pages or so and I'm, I'm still really loving this like i'm hoping i'll have more time soon to release it and dig into this because i am really enjoying it and i've been annotating it which has been a lot of fun and, um i even went as far as matching my my washi tape to the cover i got that black white and red got a red washi tape and a red pen um but i've been enjoying just kind of reading through it slowly and annotating it and i'm hoping at some point i'll have just more time to like dig into it but i've just gotten to a new perspective character which i had not known was coming up so i'm excited about that i'm curious to see how this new character is going to be um how he's going to add to what's going on because it's a character who's been mentioned a couple of times but we actually haven't seen anything of him so i'm curious to see how he's going to add to the story so yeah having a good time working on my paper getting some reading done it's, it's a very lazy Sunday um, and very quiet. It's also incredibly gross and gray outside. I don't know if it's going to be visible. No, it's just like <laughs> a wall of light. Um, but it's like super gray. We got a little bit of snow last night, so it's just been a gross and lazy day. And that's okay. But yeah, rest of the day is just going to be working on this paper. Um, but given that that's pretty much what the rest of my day is going to be and it's like 5 o'clock now, I think I'm going to end this vlog here because I don't think I'm going to do anything else interesting in the next four-ish hours. So anyway, this is all I have for you today. Thank you so much for coming along with me on my spring break journey. If you've made it this far, um, put a flower emoji in the comments. That would be really cool for, you know, we're coming into spring. This is spring break. I feel like a flower is really a good emoji for this time of year even though it's like disgusting and gray and it's snowed today thank you so much for watching i hope you've enjoyed this video even though i'm sure it's been quite long um if you have i hope you'll consider giving it a like and maybe even subscribing to see what comes next i'm currently posting every tuesday and saturday so there is more content coming soon and i hope to see you in the next video bye